the Episcopacy Committee, Reverend Harlan Gillespie. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Trimble. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. God is good. All the time. And all the time. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Amen. I'm Harlan Gillespie. It's been my privilege over the last six years to serve as the chairperson for the Committee on the Episcopacy here in the Iowa Annual Conference. For those of you who are rather new to the conference and its proceedings, let me explain a little bit about the Committee on the Episcopacy itself. Besides being a mouthful to say, and somewhat dangerous to say, said too quickly, it's a committee that's made up of lay members and clergy members from the Iowa Annual Conference who are charged with the ministry of caring for and of supporting the Episcopal family as well as the administrative assistance and the, uh, the assistance of the Bishop for Connectional Ministry. You might think of us as the equivalent to a local church's staff pastor parish relations committee but for the bishop. Our responsibilities are spelled out in quite detail in the Book of Discipline, but I know that especially at this particular time in the afternoon at this time of the conference, if I were to start reading those, you would just either fall asleep or walk out. So let me summarize them as we have lived them out over the last six years. We meet with and support the resident Bishop of Iowa as well as his or her family. We relate to one another in a covenant of mutual support and accountability in the Wesleyan tradition. By this we mean that we attempt to live out a covenant of prayer with and for one another and for the church, a relationship of deepening trust and respect. This includes also a level of vulnerability built up over the years with one another that prayerfully and hopefully grows over the years in our relationship with one another as a committee and the bishop and the assistants. Periodically we enter into a season of appraisal and evaluation of one another. This includes a description of the Iowa Annual Conference as we best see it from a lot of the input that we get from you and other conference uh, leadership, as well as an appraisal and evaluation of the bishop and his or her ministry in the life of the annual conference. This happens in a formal fashion once every four years, not long before the time that uh, bishops are considered for appointment or reappointment from the Jurisdictional Committee on the Episcopacy. It also happens what we call mid-quadrennium. That's every four years except in the middle time between general and, general and jurisdictional conferences. So this year, 2014, is a time for what we call the mid-quadrennium evaluation of Bishop Trimble and his work. We um, are represented on the North Central Committee on the Episcopacy uh, by Reverend Lillian Gil Gil Gallo Segrin and Norma Morrison. And they are part of the committee that works with the bishops of all of the Episcopal areas in the North Central jurisdiction and also then prepare for the appointment and reappointment process following jurisdictional conference once every four years. Within our scope is also the formation of the Episcopal Residence Committee. This committee has been a part of the Book of Discipline's requirements for quite some time, but Iowa has been slow in adopting that process. I'm pleased to say that over the last several years, while it's taken some time, we now have an Episcopal Residence Committee. It's a consortium, it's a meeting together of the uh, leadership of the uh, Board of Trustees, of the conference, as well as the conference, the conference council and finance administration, and the committee on the episcopacy. Now, if you think that dealing for a local church's parsonage is rather cumbersome with a representative from the SPRC and a representative from the trustees, try it with three groups. It's a it's a little bit uh, tricky at times. However, we're making progress in that, and my hope is that in the near future. Um, this committee will be able to better serve the Episcopal residents, in this case Bishop Trimble and Ray Selder, uh, in a better way yet uh, for the Episcopal residents and what the future of the residents will be not only at this particular time but also well into the future.
Now I want to introduce to you uh, two people who have been with us now for six years. When um, Bishop and Raiselda Trimble came to us six years ago, um, we were in the immediate aftermath of the largest natural disaster, the most costly natural disaster in the history of Iowa. No other disaster, natural disaster that is, in the United States had been larger prior to that except for Hurricane Katrina. And there was, and amongst the state, um, quite a bit of anxiety, to say the least, about what the future would look like. Bishop Trimble, as soon as he got here, immediately was out in the field. He was meeting with people and communities who had been directly affected by the flood, visiting with them, listening to them. He walked the soggy, soggy fields and the slippery, wet, slimy streets. And in so doing, established a practice of listening and encouraging, which was part of his personal mission statement. You know that. Mrs. Raiselder Granberry Trimble also did the same in her way. And so I would like to present them to you and invite you to welcome them as warmly as you did five years ago when we officially welcomed them in annual conference and then welcome them back this last annual conference for their next appointment of four years. Maybe even for a few more seconds than some of the others have been recognized. Right, Bishop? So let's welcome, please, Bishop Julius Calvin Trimble and, Mrs. and First Lady Mrs. Raiselder Granberry Trimble. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. It's a part of our tradition each year for, um, to hear from the spouse of our resident bishop, and so I would introduce to you now First Lady Reselder Granberry Trimble. Thank you, Howard. Do you want to hear some good news? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Do you want to hear some more good news? Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Friends, you look good out there. I have one other bit of good news I want to share, and I said the same through the True Vine Ministry Clergy Spouses, a ministry of encouragement. The good news is that God is looking down right now. You don't have to imagine this. This is for real, friends. God is looking down right now and saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love Iowa's annual conference, amen? amen. And all, oh, that's not good, he, God loves you, amen, amen. In 2009 at our first annual conference, I, you, I shared with you that you honored me so by being able to say across this nation, across this conference, you did so well to say Ray Selder. Amen? Amen? I really appreciated that. But friends, I'm gonna give you another little thing you have to learn how to say, and that's to now call me First Lady Ray Selder. <laughs> There's a reason behind that, and God put that on me in January. As the wife of Bishop Julius Calvin Trimble, I've been his wife for 35 years as of May 12th, 
17-year-old young girl, college student, childhood sweetheart that we met. But I worked very hard to be Mrs. Trimble every single day. Amen? All you married, you know that true, right? Amen. But as the pastor's wife, I had the responsibility as his wife to be in prayer for our local congregation. Friends and families that I knew and I learned to love, and they are still a special part of our hearts even to this day. And so as the pastor's wife, the first lady of that church, I took that responsibility earnestly and honestly to be in prayer with those persons of our congregation. These are people that I knew. My husband went on to become the district superintendent of then the Cleveland district of 51 churches. And I again took that responsibility as the wife of the district superintendent to be in prayer and relationship every day for not just a local church anymore, but for 51 churches as well as our conference. And that was a responsibility that I take on. But on as the, as I've shared with the clergy spouses, to be encouraged is to be in relationship. And that's what I was as a pastor's wife and as district superintendent's wife. And so as the first Timothy requires the bishop to be in responsible leadership, so is the responsibility of that person that stands next to him. It doesn't distance me at all from the responsibility I have as a wife, a mother, and to myself, but to be in relationship with those persons in this capacity for the rest of my life as the bishop's wife. And so I'm in relationship not with people that I see every day or see sometime. I see most of you at this, at this gathering and those of you who distinguish yourselves to me, I really love and appreciate that because that puts a name to my prayers. The young lady who's the diaconal uh, that's in the wheelchair, I see her every year and I pray for her through the year. Linda Amos is a person who distinguished herself with a prayer shawl that she sent to me out of her love as a pastor's wife. Uh, just to say I'm praying for you, and so that's receiving it back. So as a spouse of a district, of the Bishop of the United Methodist Church, I too am always a clergy spouse, and I'm also always me, Ray Selder. However, I see as my ministry and my focus, I am called to encourage and to be in relationship with those who serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. I am also in leadership to encourage those who seek to know and serve the Lord. I have faith that the actions of a few can encourage more than we can see, touch, or know. In 2014, the bishop and I have adopted the phrase, hope for the best, expect the best. When you hope for things, as Sarah Stevens, a lay member of this annual conference, has encouraged us to imagine, our conference artist, Ted Litton Hatton, asked us to hope and realize that what you hope for is things that you don't see. So therefore, friends, when we say hope for the best, you're hoping for good things. You're hoping for blessed things. If you don't feel good, you don't hope to continue to feel bad. If you feel bad, do you? No. You hope to feel better. And so therefore, when we say, and some of you probably have said this at some point in your life, and I encourage you to change that self-talk. Hope for the best and expect the worst. Now, when you expect the worst, Therefore, you distance what you're hoping for of the good things to come to you. So that's why we have adopted hope for the best, expect the best. Amen? Can you say it with me? Hope for the best. Hope for the best. Expect the best. Expect the best. Therefore, friends, I want to share with, for, with you two last things in closing. I want you to continue to imagine, and in your imagination, this will come true, to identify what it is that you hope for. So as 2014 continues on, continue to hope and imagine that coming forward. 
The last thing, the clergy spouses of the Iowa Annual Conference through the True Vine Ministry have honored the bishop this year uh, with a donation towards the Imagine No More Malaria. He will be celebrating his 60th birthday on June 18th, amen? And we have collected in a free will donation uh, to honor that that has already been counted in the numbers that adds to our $465 last year, an additional $210 from the True Vine Ministry. Amen. So friends, I ask you to realize that God has come to give you life and give it more abundantly. So therefore, I would like for you in 2014 to live rather than just try to survive, to live rather than just trying to thrive. Live the life of abundance that God has given you and it will be yours. So therefore, may the Lord continually bless you with heaven's blessings as well as with human joys. Amen? Amen. Thank you, annual conference. I love you. Thank you, First Lady Reselder Granberry Trimble. Recently, we established a tradition in which we take an offering at this time for the Bishop's Discretionary Fund. So I invite you to get ready to do that. The Bishop's Discretionary Fund is, um, is a resource that Bishop Trimble uses to address immediate needs that may occur anywhere in the conference and sometimes outside of the conference. It might be an immediate need of a, of a disaster response that can be taken care of immediately now rather than delayed and pushed back a little bit further. Or it might be uh, something like a uh, contribution to the urban farming project at Matthew 25 Ministry Hub in Cedar Rapids, Iowa to encourage emerging ministries and encourage people to continue to work through those things. It's a marvelous way for this conference to touch the lives of others as we so richly and generously do all the time that we meet through prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. In the preparation for the taking of that offering, I'd invite you to pray with me for a few minutes. And um, they got away from me too soon. Bishop and First Lady, could you come back here just for a moment, please? Sorry. And I invite you to uh, extend a hand someplace in prayer towards Bishop and First Lady. And let's pray, shall we? Gracious and loving God, pour your Holy Spirit out upon this Episcopal family and upon their extended family as well. And upon this family that they call the Iowa Annual Conference. Amen. Most gracious God, let your Holy Spirit give us clarity, conviction, courage, and give us a challenge, most gracious God, because we know very well in our life and in the ways you structured life on this earth, life cannot thrive without some challenge. Let that life of love thrive in all of us, and especially in Bishop and Ray Selder as they lead us in the years ahead. Most gracious God, Bishop Trimble came here with a personal mission statement to encourage others with the love of Jesus Christ to rise to their highest potential in your sight. Gracious God, we are thankful for the way in which we together have risen a bit more each year into that potential encouraged by your love. And so most gracious God, we also pray for those who will be the beneficiaries of this special offering to aid, to comfort, to heal, to encourage. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us all to pray saying together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give of ourselves with joy. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. You.